All right, so before we head into layer three of Torghast, I just want to show you guys what talents I'm choosing to go in here with. Uh, I'm going for a more of a defensive build here, so Demonic Appetite is going to help with survivability and self-healing. Uh, Burning Hatred, because it interacts with some of the uh, anima powers pretty well. There's one that extends... Every time you attack something, it extends the duration of Immolation Aura, um, which means it you know, just interacts with this pretty good. You keep building Fury. Uh, Glaive Tempest is, I mean, it just does the most damage, and it's good for dealing with the uh, skeletal remains, the skeletons that explode. Uh, so you can drop the Glaive Tempest and run away, and your Glaive will, will kill them, um, and you don't have to get exploded on and killed. Uh, Soul Rending for the additional Leech. Um, it only gives you 5% out of meta, but um, if you start getting some anima powers that keep you in meta form longer, um, obviously you're getting that extra 25% leech, so... Um, yeah, super good for defensive. Uh, First Blood, we're taking this because there are some anima powers in there that interact with Blade Dance. And if you're using the Cycle of Hatred build, you're just not using Blade Dance. So if you are forced into taking those Blade Dance anima powers, they're a complete waste. So we take First Blood just so we can keep uh, Blade Dance in our rotation. You're going to take Fell Eruption for a second stun. So you can alternate between your Chaos Nova and your Fell Eruption. Um, super necessary on some of the later bosses that you need to keep under control. And then obviously Demonic just to stay in uh, demon form for more of the run. And, you know, the longer you're in demon form, the more damage you're doing, the more healing you're doing. Um, so that's kind of my thought process behind this talent build that I've been using in Torghast. It's been working well for me. Um, for food, you don't have to use food. It's not necessary, but I'm choosing to use some versatility food. Um, obviously just versus good, more damage, more HP. Um, and then my item level is 183. Again, you don't have to be this high. This is, uh, you know, I've done it on other characters on like 160 item level, 170. Um, trinkets, I'm using uh, Vial of Putrefaction and the Grim Codex. Again, you don't need gear like this. This is not necessary. You can do it in all blues. It's, it's more about strategy in here. It's not about item level and plowing through it. All right, so let's go. Um, by the way, I'm doing Mortrigar. This is... I've come to the consensus after asking a few people that this is the harder wing um, compared to Fracture Chambers. So we're going to go in here. And we'll go to layer three. Here we go. So let's see what animal power we get right off the bat. This could make or break the run right here. Okay, so. Uh, blindfold of Focus. Damaging an enemy with Throw Glaive from at least 20 yards away will grant you 100 Fury. Metamorphosis cooldown reduced by 15%. We're going to take this one. Um, this basically makes it so you get your cooldown for meta kind of like how it was with Vision of Perfection in BFA. So over the course of the entire run, that's going to give us a lot of uh, damage increase. Okay, so we want to just make our way through here. You want to kill all of these phylacteries as you go through because they're going to drop um, uh, Phantasma, which you're going to need later on. Um, okay, so we're in a very particular, particularly difficult situation right here. We have no way around this. There's a big guy there. And some little mobs here. Um, so, one of them is a humanoid. Which means we could imprison it. These other ones are undead. We can't really do anything about that. That one's a beast. And this big guy is undead. So what we're probably going to do... Is... We are going to try to imprison... The Fey Leaf Warden. I don't know if it'll work because... This guy might hit him and take him out of the imprison. Either way, we're going to have to go in there and fight it. Um, this will be a good time to use our meta, get that on cooldown. Uh, we're going to be using our uh, Trinket, Darkness. We're going to use all of our defensives here. And this guy is going to cast some things that we want to interrupt. We want to stun as much as possible. And yeah. All right. Here goes nothing. Oh, this guy's right here. We can talk to this... 
they really help you. They do a lot of damage if you can find those companions. They actually do a lot of damage and uh, help you out. Okay, this was much easier than I expected it to be. That's fine. No complaints here. Salute and move on. Uh, so these bound souls, do you want to click on them? After you're done dealing with everything else. Again, we're just watching for interrupts, making sure we're interrupting as much as we can. When you click on these bound souls, they give you a stack of this buff here, Soul Remnant's Blessing. And that gives you 1% of your primary stat, and that stacks. So 1% might not seem like much now, but once you get towards the end of the dungeon, when you have, you know, 20, 30 stacks of that, it's quite powerful. Um, we also got another Anima Power here, uh, Bloating Fodder. You cause Maul Rats to explode on death, dealing 2,600 Plague damage to all other nearby enemies. Um, one, you know, it's something. It's not the best Anima Power you can get, but it can help you out. Alright, let's move on. We have another Bound Soul up here we're going to get. Um, let's pull this Maul Rat into these enemies here. We're going to pop our Blur before we go in there. We're going to use our Sinful Brand on the big guy. Keep an eye on our Lesser Soul Fragments, pick them up as we need them. See there's some Maw Rats here that we're going to kill and use for damage. And there we go. Okay, we're going to click on the Soul Remnant to get another stack of the buff. So now you can see up here we have two stacks, which means it's 2%. Um, so there is another platform up here with a rare, I'm assuming. Um, usually you want to go in that direction if you see something like that, because there will be a rare up there that will drop uh, another anima power. Okay, so we got another stack of this. We're at 3% primary stat now. Be very careful along here. The good thing about de being a demon hunter is on your way down, you can kind of just jump and glide. Uh, but, you know, on your way up, you got to be careful. Slow and steady wins the race. That's the thing about these higher uh, layers of Torghast. You want to take it slow and steady. Be methodical about it. Don't try to, like, pull a ton of shit because you'll just get yourself in trouble. Don't take too many risks. Just go slow and steady. Okay. So this is our rare here. We should be fine. We'll have meta up in 15 seconds. We also have a maw rat there we can utilize for some damage. So I think our best bet is to just uh, hop in there and hope for the best. We're gonna pop Blur right away. We're gonna stun this. Sinful Brand, interrupt that cast. We're gonna use our Trinket. Uh, stun this. So we stun that cast so it doesn't go off. And he's dead. move out of the way there okay so we have two to choose from here defiance of death you are unable to lose more than 25 percent of your maximum health from a single attack or every 12 seconds the gaze of death focuses on a random enemy within 20 yards for eight seconds this effect causes the target to take increased damage randomly between one percent and fifty percent we're gonna take this one because chances are you know if we're playing well we shouldn't be hit by huge things that cause us to drop for more than 25% of our health. Um, this one seems like it could be pretty powerful, especially towards the end when we're fighting, you know, the final boss by himself. That means the, that debuff is obviously going to go on the boss. Um, so that, you know, could be pretty beneficial for us. So we're going to take that and make our way back down. Like I said, being careful here, we can just kind of glide. Okay. 
So the hand in for the quest is right here, but we're going to keep going. We're going to come back for it. That way we can utilize our helper here to kill this mob. Interrupt. I beam, watch out for the puddles. We're going to stun. Use our trinket. It's dead. Okay, so we have three options. Uh, killing a Marat during meta adds six seconds to the duration. Or when you add, when you attack a new creature, you're healed for 6,700. Or Dwarf Shadows weakens all enemies you pass through, increasing their damage taken by 20% for uh, 30 seconds. So this one is pretty powerful if you use Dwarf Shadows. Me, personally, I don't really use it. I don't really... I don't know. I'm a demon hunter. I don't really need it. Um, I think this one is going to be more powerful for us. When you attack a new creature, you're healed for 6,400. Um, we're going to go with that one. I think that's going to add to our survivability. Okay, then we're going to hand this quest in. There she is. Indigo. Thank goodness. And this should give us another anima power. Thank you for helping us. Yep, okay, so you can get 300 Phantasma, or Sinful Brand applies to one additional target. I think this one is going to be our best bet because I think around floor four and floor five, there's going to be some pretty difficult packs with about four or five mobs in them. And being able to apply Sinful Brand on multiple enemies is going to be really beneficial. So we're going to go with that. Okay, and now we're moving on to floor two. Now, it's going to start to ramp up here. That was a fairly easy floor. Okay. So these more open rooms like this, you want to be very, very methodical. Right, so just pull it a little bit at a time. Start chipping away at the enemy count in here. So we're going to go right first. Get this soul remnant. And we'll kill this guy here. I think next we're going to go to the opposite side over there. We should be able to just fight those three enemies, or however many there are, four. And we're going to watch out for those dead soul echoes. We're probably going to use our sinful brand on those two right there. It should apply to both of them. Interrupt once, stun the other, I-beam, Wave Tempest, watch out for the puddles, and they die. Beautiful. Okay, we're going to sneak past here. I think we can take that entire pull there. I think we could do it, but... Just to be safe, I'm going to go over there and pull those two. Got some friends. Again, you're just watching out for things. Watch for casts. If you see something interruptible, interrupt it, kick it. Um, sometimes things aren't interruptible, but you can still stun them. So you definitely want to do that whenever you can. So on a pull like this, you have to sort of... You have to weigh your, your odds here. Is fighting this worth it? Are, do you think you'll be able to survive? I think I can. I think the only thing to fear is this guy in the middle. We fought something like this at the start of this run. So I don't think he's that deadly. We do also have meta up. So I say we just try it. Kick that. Uh, Glaive Tempest. Okay, uh, we're going to stun. Going to meta. Kick that. Stun. Glaive Tempest. 
Okay, so that pull was worth it, because that guy that we just killed dropped an anima power. And of course, we're looting along the way because they do drop Phantasma. Alright, what did we get here? Door of Shadows increases your chance to dodge by 20% for 15 seconds. Again, I'm not going to really be using Door of Shadows, so I'm going to take the 300 Phantasma. That'll be good on the next floor. Uh, every third floor is a Broker level, which means it's just a vendor. So that's your opportunity to rest up, buy Anima Powers that you might have missed, uh, and just spend all the Phantasma you've gained along the way. Okay, so... Yeah, we should be fine here. We'll pull these two. Go over here, kill this guy. And break these, just because you never know what you might find in here. Sometimes you can find anima powers in there. And usually in a room like this, it's best to just hug the left side here. We can backtrack if we need to, but often there is an anima power in this jar right here. So acquire 300 Phantasma or you restore 3% health per second while gliding. Uh, we're not going to be gliding that often, so we'll take the 300 Phantasma. So the goal for us is to get up there. There's likely something up there. So we need to kind of clear a path there. These guys shouldn't be much of an issue. That pack over there with the two big guys might be, so we're going to try to go just straight across. Okay, we have two friends here. We're going to pull in this guy as well. Watch for casts. We're kicking them. I'm going to pop Blur. Wave Tempest. Trinket. Stun. We're good. Alright, up the chain. There should be a rare up here. Unless he's hidden. <laughs> nope. Maybe there's something in these jars. Nope. Alright. Well, at least we checked. <laughs> at least we investigated. See, it's funny because on my mini-map it says there is something. Yep, nope, nothing. Alright, so I'm going to grab the Soul Remnant. I think I'm going to skip this pack here. I think having two of those guys to fight is kind of sketchy. What I am going to do, though, is head this way and f uh, do this quest. Because like I said on the previous floor, having a helper like this is really, really beneficial. They actually do quite a bit of damage. And sometimes when you free them... Um, okay, this one's not going to help me. So we get a, we get a, just get a free anima power for talking to them. Uh, casting Door of Shadows reaches the cast number of Door of Shadows by 10%. Again, we're not using Door of Shadows, so we're going to take 300 Phantasma. And if you do find one of these quests that are part of your Covenant, sometimes you can get them as um, champions for your mission table. So, lucky me. I found one. Sweet. Okay. I think our next play here is... I think we take on this pack here. We do have meta. I'm going to check these. Nothing here. We do have meta. So I think we can just go in there and blast them all down.
kick that. Move out of that. Stun. Ah, uh, we didn't stun quick enough, so he vanished. He'll pop back up and hit us in the back of the head when we least expect it. Okay, fight these two. There he is. Stun. So at the end of every floor, you'll have to fight one of these empowered enemies. They're generally pretty easy, nothing to worry about. They're not elite or anything, but they will always drop an anima power. They do have a lot of health though, that's the only thing. Stun that, or interrupt it. Okay, so, Maw Rat Harness. Obtain a Maw Rat Harness, an item that allows you to transform into a Maw Rat while in Torghast. Or, increase Phantasma earned by 25%, or you restore 3% health per second while gliding. None of these are all that good, I'll be honest. Um, we'll take the Maw Rat one, just because we've already, we've already looted a lot of Phantasma. We're at 1,200 right now can buy pretty much anything we want. Let's take this. And we can see, uh, transform you into a Maw Rat while in Torghast, increasing your movement speed by 100%. So if we got something else that was a, a power anima, uh, like a boost, like maybe uh, the double I beam one or something, I would consider maybe going back and clearing this, but we didn't. Um, so we don't really have any power increases. We do have meta up in a minute, there is a chance that these could potentially drop an anima power. So I think I think we take the risk and we do it. As long as we're good with our interrupts and our stuns, we should be able to do it. Um, so this is the type of stuff you have to decide as you're going through this, because if you skip out on too many things and you miss out on anima powers, you're going to be too weak by the time you get to the last boss and you won't be able to kill it, right? So you kind of have to take risks in certain places to make sure that you're powerful enough later on. So let's clear a few of these by themselves. I think we can taunt this guy. Okay, we got one of them. Hey, that's helpful. We somehow split those two. That couldn't have gone any better, guys. It's not what we meant to do, but we're not going to complain. Okay, nothing from that guy. Let's see if we get anything here. I'm gonna pop blur. And yeah, these are going down pretty easily. I think it would have been a challenge if we had both of them at the same time, but we're lucky enough to get them one at a time, so we're doing okay. Alright, so no anima powers from those, but at least we killed them, we looted some phantasma, and we also got another stack of uh, this soul remnant thing now, so we are up to, what, six? Six percent primary stat. 
And this guy here, this just he just respawns. So we're gonna leave him there. And we'll move on to the third floor. So now we're ready to spend all of this phantasma that we looted. We actually have a ton of phantasma. Oh, I can use my Ma Rat harness, right? Cool. Okay, so we can see over here there is a bound soul remnant. I'm going to take this off just to be safe. I don't trust myself running across the chain in mall rat form. and we can use it again. There's likely nothing over there, so we're going to keep going. I don't see anything over there either. And we have our broker here. Get the soul remnant. Get this guy. I usually like to pick up the anima power at the end before buying from the broker. Just so I know kind of where I'm where I'm at, what I need to spend my uh, phantasma on. So we have three three options here. I beam has a 20% chance to not incur its cooldown. Pretty good. Uh, I beam refreshes the duration of sinful brand. Pretty good, especially if you can use meta and apply sinful brand on a bunch of enemies, right? And then let it get down to like one or so seconds on the uh, duration of sinful brand, and then I beam. And refresh it on all those enemies again. Super useful. Or I-beam cooldown is reduced by 60% when used during metamorphosis. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Sinful Brand one because I've taken the other anima power um, that applies Sinful Brand to an, an additional enemy. Um, so we're making choices like that that kind of synergize together, right? You don't want to take too many random ones because you'll get more power out of it if you pick ones that work together. Um, so if you have the Phantasma when you get to this broker, it's always a good idea to buy the Plundered Anima Cell. That's just basically a free power. So click on that. Uh, using Blade Dance increases your chance to dodge by 15% for 8 seconds. Nice, Blizz. Uh, and then Looting Phantasma increases the damage of your next I-Beam by 1%. So this is what I meant by, you know, potentially running into Anima Powers that use Blade Dance. If we were taking the Cycle of Hatred build where we just don't press Blade Dance, that would have been a com complete waste and it would have forced us into taking this one. Which isn't that bad, but you kind of have to play around it. So we're going to take this one. It's going to help us with our uh, survivability later on. And now we have 1,100 Phantasma to spend on other stuff, right? So we can take this one, Ravenous Anima Cell. This is super good. Uh, transforms a non-elite target uh, into an Anima Cell. This will be very, very useful. So we'll take that. We'll hold on to that. Don't forget you have this. I've done a few runs where I've purchased one of these and just let it sit in my bag the entire time. I forgot I had it. Um, okay, so we have some options here. Increase crit damage and healing by 6%. Pretty good. When you attack a new creature, you're healed for 6,748. So we already have this one. It's Curious Miasma, but it does stack. So that's a lot of healing. We're going to take one of those. So you can see now, when you attack a new creature, you're healed for 13,000. That's over half my health. So that's good. Uh, the cooldown of Blur is reduced by 25%. Very good. Destroying an Ashen Phylactery increases the damage of your next Demon's Bite by 20%. This effect stacks up to 100 times. Again, sounds good on paper, but you kind of have to play around it, and chances are you'll, you know, you'll break a bunch of Phylacteries, but then you'll have to fight a Maw Rat, and you're like, oh shit, you know, there goes all my stacks. So we're not going to take that one. Uh, Felborn Pendant, your first Chaos Strike on the floor deals an additional 750 damage. This could be good later on. So we're going to take this. 
uh, and the cooldown to cooldown of blade dance is re reduced by fifteen percent. So we're that's that's really good. We're gonna take that, and then we're just gonna buy both of these. Okay. Until our next we should be in a pretty good spot for the next floor. Let's see. I always look for traps as soon as I zone in. I don't think there's many traps in this wing of Torghast, but you never know. See, this is what I meant. You'll end up killing all of these, right? And then you have a Maurat to fight, and you waste all of your stacks. Okay, so this is a pack. A lot of enemies, but a lot of them are pretty easy. So we're just going to rush in there and kill them all. We're going to save this ravenous anima cell for one of these big guys down here. Okay, so we're going to go in. And lucky for us, dropped an anima power. Increased verse by 3%. Boring, but good. No complaints there. Verse is always accepted. Okay, this guy's by himself, so I'm not going to use the Anima Cell. We're going to save it for a pack where there's a few big guys, and we want to sort of lessen the damage. Interrupt that. Soul Remnant. Okay. See, we could use it here. But I think we could just take both of these. I see a lot more mobs up ahead, so I think it could be more useful to use the Ravenous Anima Cell up there. So, let's pull these. Stun. See, sometimes you get lucky like this and these enemies just fight each other. And we got another animal power. Increase maximum health by 15%. Again, pretty boring, but pretty useful. Okay, we're going to test something here. We're going to see if we can imprison this Fey Leaf Tender. Just to see. Yeah, so it gets broken out of combat right away. That's the unfortunate thing about this wig in particular. The one type of mob that you can actually imprison to, and use that to your benefit, uh, it just gets broken out anyways because they're in combat. Okay. So we should be able to pull these down if we taunt them. There we go. Just a bit safer down here instead of fighting them up there on the stairs and potentially pulling the big guy. Okay, we have a Maurat there we can use to our advantage, because remember we do have uh, Bloating Fodder, which means it explodes upon death, doing about 3,000 damage. Pretty good. Uh, we can't use our Ravenous Anima Cell on this guy because he is an elite. So we'll just fight him. No biggie. Watching for things to interrupt or stun. Looks like he's not going to do anything. Okay. We'll get this soul remnant. No 
Okay, so we don't have much left here. We have the empowered guy at the end, uh, who is not an elite, I believe. But we do want to kill him because he drops an anima power. I think if we use the anima cell on him, he would just turn into a power and we wouldn't get two. We'd only get one. Um, but we are on floor four. Floor five could be pretty sticky. So I'm going to save the anima cell for floor five. Pull him, Sinful Brand. We're gonna interrupt this. We're gonna stun this. We're gonna dodge the circle, stun. Interrupt. And he's dead. Okay. You receive an additional 20% healing from soul fragments. Decent. Killing Ma Rat during meta adds 6 seconds to the duration. Meh. You're immune to all damage when channeling I-Beam. This could be pretty good if used properly. So we're going to take it. We're going to take it. Okay. Floor 5. This is where things really heat up. A lost fay bound in torment. Free them. Lest they okay. be consumed. We're gonna taunt these back. By darkness. Hey, we only got one. Nice. see if we can taunt this guy without pulling anything else. If we do pull more, it's not the biggest deal in the world. We'll just kill them. No. Okay. Got him by itself. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna go talk to this Fey. And then we'll we'll fight. We're gonna meta. These guys do have quite a bit of health. They're gonna vanish though. <laughs> they'll, they'll come back when we least expect it. That's fine. Just taking our time, uh, opening all these phylacteries. There's the guys that disappeared on us. See, our little Fey friend right there was straight up tanking one of the enemies. Now, if you are quick enough, you can stun that Vanish. If you're watching for it. Uh, we'll keep moving ahead. I think we should use... Okay, that's one of the downsides of having a friend like this. <laughs> she just randomly moonfires things. I think we're going to use the Ravenous Anima Cell. There we go. So, we turn that enemy into an Anima Power. And our friends are back. And he dropped an anima power. Beautiful. So we have two now. Destroying an ashen phylactery increases the damage of your next demon's bite by 20%. Okay, we don't like that one. Door of Shadows weakens all enemies. See, we got another Door of Shadows power. They really want us to take these, don't they? This is probably our only choice right here, so we'll take it. Okay, this is the one I was hoping we would get. So... Dead Soul Death Pools no longer damage you. 
and instead you absorb them, healing yourself for 754 uh, health every one second. So these pools on the ground, normally you stand in them, they do damage to you, you want to avoid them. But now that we have this, we can actually use them to our benefit. Um, but the trick with these is, let them grow to their max size, and then step in them, right? Because as you're standing in them, you consume them, and they grow smaller and smaller. So if you stand in them while they're small, you don't get as much out of it if you let it grow and then stand in it, right? Okay, so yeah, this is a deadly pull here. We will have meta in 30 seconds. So I know this is deadly because the Dead Soul choruses uh, are very, very powerful. You can see it's an elite. It has 60 plus, which means it's an elite. We also have the Dead Soul miscreation here, which is also an elite. Um, but there's really no way around it. There's also a rare over here. So I'm thinking maybe we can tag this rare and pull it back. And that should give us another anima power that might help us with this main fight here, right? So uh, there's not really anything we can imprison. I might just have to taunt him. So taunt and run back. Interrupt. Stun. We're not standing in the pool yet because we haven't taken damage. We can get in there now. We've been hit with something. We're going to stun. Poplar. Cool. Okay, so you have a high chance to inflict no mortality, dealing 7,617 shadow damage over 12 seconds and reducing the target's movement speed by 50%. Or, again, Purifier's Flame, Dead Soul Pools no longer uh, damage you, and instead you absorb them. So that would just make them heal me for more. Um, I think we should take the damage one, because that's a lot of damage. That is a lot of damage. That's like a whole other sinful brand. Uh, and it's your attacks have a high chance, so it should be applied pretty often. So we'll take that. Uh, and now that we've waited that long, we have our meta back up, so we're going to go in there and pull this pack. So again, we're watching for things we can interrupt. Stunning at the right times. Here we go. Gonna AoE stun. Meta. Interrupt that. We're going to step in this pool. And it went down pretty easily. Uh, we still have... No, nope, Meta's about to run off. Okay. And this stuff, get the soul remnant. And we're good. Get the soul remnant. So if you see something like this, you can grab it. It basically gives you the option to use grapple points. Um, so once you do that, you just want to keep an eye open for it. Uh, you can see there's an anima power over there, right? Up on that hill over there. So now that we picked up that rope, we can use that grapple point there. So you can see it, you mouse over it, you get a uh, golden gear. Click on it. And up we go. See, this is, this is what we wanted, guys. Grim Tinder. Dealing any damage refreshes the duration of Immolation Aura. Or Bloating Fodder. We already have this, it's not that good. This one is really good. Um, for a very specific reason. I will show you. So, again, dealing any damage refreshes the duration of Immolation Aura. Now, for my conduit, I took this, Growing Inferno. Immolation Aura's damage increases by 13% each time it deals damage. So each tick of Immolation Aura, usually at the standard duration without the Grim Tinder Anima Power, it'll tick 12 times. Um, 
but with Grim Tinder, you could keep it going. Um, Blizzard did hotfix this where it caps out at 10 times the amount of base damage of Immolation Aura. Um, there was some pretty funky things happening in here where people were just doing absolutely insane damage with this uh, synergy. So they had to, uh, you know, cap it off at 10 times the amount, which is still a decent amount. It's still a lot of damage. Um, but yeah, we're going to be pretty powerful now. Want to just rush in here. We're still playing defensively because we're not like immortal, but we're going to be doing a lot of damage. I'm going to rush ahead. Keep Immolation Aura going. Fight this guy. And you can see to the left there, there's the item for the quest. We can pick that up, get another Anima Power. Uh, soul Render of Zoval. Generating, generate a lesser soul fragment from a nearby enemy every five seconds. Or, uh, Corruption Antenna, your attacks have a chance to curse your target, dealing 15,000 shadow damage to your target over 8 seconds. That's pretty good. Uh, or the Demon's Bite one. We're going to take the Soul Fragment one, because that's pretty powerful. You get a free Soul Fragment every 5 seconds. We'll click on this to get another power. That's it. My flute. So look at the damage my Immolation Aura did, by the way. I will get to somewhere safer. It did an insane amount, because I kept the ticks going. Okay, Abundance of Phantasma. Acquire 300 Phantasma. Sinful Brand applies to one additional target. Um, so we're already on Floor 5. We're about to move on to Floor 6. Floor 6 is literally just one more enemy, uh, the boss. So getting this one is not worth it, right? Because we're only going to be fighting one enemy. So we're going to take 300 Phantasma. Let's backtrack here. Uh, loot this. Talk to the Soul Remnant. We can move on. The last floor. So we do have about 830 Phantasma to spend at the Broker. That should be able to get us a few things. There's actually some phylacteries here for us to open up. Now, just so you know, when I was killing those phylacteries, I didn't use my Chaos Strike, right? Because I took the power, um, where is it? Your first Chaos Strike on the floor does 700% uh, extra damage. 750%, right? So I didn't press Chaos Strike to open those. Use Immolation Aura, use, you know, Fell Rush, whatever. Uh, but you don't want to burn that uh, Chaos Strike. Okay, so we're going to buy a Plundered Anima Cell. Okay. Casting I Beam summons an allied Vengeance Demon Hunter who casts Fell Devastation. So this is basically the legendary uh, Collective Anguish. Very powerful. Very, very powerful. It basically just enhances the damage your I Beam does. Um, Metamorphosis increases your size, movement speed, and melee range by 100%. Not particularly useful. Um, the only thing that's really useful here is the melee range by 100%. So if you're fighting a boss where you kind of have to step away to dodge something, you can still attack. But we're not too concerned about that because we have things like uh, Glaive Tempest that we can drop and run away. So that's still doing damage while we're not in range. I think this one's going to be the better option for us. So we'll pick this. Okay, and now we have 700 Phantasma to spend on these things. So let's see. What do we have here? Crit Strike Chance by 3%. Bloating fodder. There probably won't be any mall rats with the, the final boss, so we won't get this. Uh, you receive an additional 20% healing from soul fragments. Could be good. Damage of blade dance is increased by 50%. Good. Here we go. 
See, this is what I was hoping for. Immolation or damage increased by 100%. So again, using this in synergy with, uh, where is it, Grim Tinder. Dealing any damage refreshes the duration of Immolation Aura, along with the Conduit. Along with the Conduit, Growing Inferno, Immolation Aura's damage increases by 13% each time it deals an enemy. Immolation Aura is going to be chunking. Okay, so we're going to take this. Uh, you move 100% faster for 5 seconds after casting Fell Rush. I think we'll be okay without that. We'll get the Blade Dance one for more damage. We'll get the Bountiful Souls. And... We are going to take the potion just in case. We might need this potion. So we'll put the potion on our bards here. Okay. Which boss do we have here? Watchers of Death. So we made it here without dying at all, which is good. That means we have five deaths remaining. Hopefully it doesn't take us five attempts to kill this guy, but these final bosses are known to be pretty hard. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're doing everything to the best of our ability. Right, we're going to be interrupting what we can, stunning what we can. Um, it's best practice to do it at the end of the cast, so you can hopefully line things up better and get more interrupts, more stuns off. Uh, use your potion when you need to. Make sure you're using your cooldowns appropriately. And uh, yeah, let's give her a shot. Interrupt that. We're going to stun. Meta immune. Stun. Interrupt. We don't have any interrupts here. See, we're getting all these soul fragments. We can just heal right back up. Keep moving. Stun. Okay, he seems to be immune to stun. We're gonna interrupt. Easy clap. There it is. Um, so I already did this for the week, so we didn't get Soul Ash or anything. But yeah, that's kind of it, guys. That's uh, th That was Layer 3. Um, I will be making more videos next week when we get more layers available. Um, but again, all you have to do is kind of just pay attention to what anima powers you're getting and try to select them so they synergize with each other. You know, try to remember what you've gotten how to use it. Um, oftentimes it's good to take the defensive ones um, if you're afraid of dying, like if you're kind of squishy and you don't have interrupts and you don't have stuns, maybe go a bit more defensive. Um, if, you, if you're like, if, if, you know, if you're playing a demon hunter um, and you have, you know, a stun, two stuns, an interrupt, meta immune, blur, you can kind of go for some more defensive, uh, sorry, some more offensive things. But again, take the ones that synergize together um, like, you know, getting the Grim Tinder one along with Immolation Flux. Um, using, you know, paying attention to what conduits you're using. Using Growing Inferno with those other Immolation Aura ones. Um, yeah, stuff like that. Alright, so thank you for watching. And again, I'll make um, some videos next week when we get more layers. I'll do a video for layer, I think it'll go up to 6 next week? 7? Whatever the max is next week, I'll make a video on that. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Peace.